Joan Keeley and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm going to show you my PDF pattern stash. So I only started buying PDF patterns a couple of months ago about the same time that I discovered the sewing community and I've built up quite a few since then but unfortunately I'm really not very good at actually making them. I'm going to go through and show you them but actually I haven't made many of them yet so that might have to be a goal of mine to actually make my patterns. So I'm still looking to do my Q&A so if you do have any questions for me at all then please just post them down below so I can put them together for that video. I've got quite a few questions so far but just if there are any extras so I can get that filmed really soon. Now one thing that I'm not really sure about with PDF patterns is how to store them. So at the moment I've put them in plastic wallet but I don't think that that's like a that good of a way to store them so if you've got any ideas of ways that I could store them that would be really good um, just comment them below because I do need some help with that. So all of my PDF patterns I keep in this big box from Ikea and this goes on top of my tower of fabric and then I just put them all in there so that's kind of the storage space for them. So I do need something relatively flat to kind of fit them in there but actually it's a really good storage space for them and then I've got my paper patterns in a separate box which is under the bed. So this is my biggest collection of patterns um, and these are all from Sew Over It so I've got quite a few from there. So the first is this one and this is the Eve dress from Sew Over It so that's a woven dress pattern. I'm really looking forward to making it but at the moment it's just like this so I've cut out the general pattern pieces but I haven't cut out my size yet and I've cut everything out ready but I just haven't made it. I do have some fabric in mind which I'm going to make it with but I need to make a test version first to just check the, the fit so that's kind of what's holding me off a lot of these patterns is I've deliberately picked ones that are a bit more challenging in terms of my skills and that a lot of the time that means that I have to test fit and things and I really hate testing fit that's my worst thing. The next couple are from the first ebook so that was the my capsule wardrobe so I've got the patterns for the molly top, the erin skirt, the mia jeans, the alex shirt dress and then the Lola coat as well. So I've got those. I have got an Alex shirt dress cut out, but I haven't sewn it together yet. And I cut out just standard from the pattern without any adjustments. So I'm kind of not wanting to sew it because in case it doesn't fit me, because um, quite often most woven patterns um, don't fit me around the shoulder area. So I have bought a few fitting books to kind of help me with that. So one of the books I bought was this one, so it's the Palmer Pletch um, Guide to Fitting, so they're a new one, and this was £24, I got it from Sew Essential, and I started to read it, I've only got a few pages in, but I think that this will really help me because it is fitting woven garments that I'm struggling more with. Um, in Jersey things tend to just stretch to fit, but I really want to learn um, how to fit woven ones. I used to be able to do it but that was when I, my body was kind of a different shape um, and so now it's kind of changed a little bit. Um, I need to learn again basically so I've got that one to do that. So then I've also got the second ebook so Work to Weekend and I haven't made anything from this yet but I do have um, a few printed out already so I printed out the cape dress and the ED top there in here. So I have got them printed out but I haven't stuck them together yet so I'm still waiting on some time to do those. And then these were the two first PDF patterns I bought, which is why they're in these jazzy envelopes, which I was gonna kind of start to put them in, uh, but then I realized I can't see it on the outside, so I need to maybe stick a picture or something like that. So in these I have, in this one, I have the Ultimate Trousers, which is these. I've made these once but they were a test version and I've not got round to making the proper pair yet so the ones I made the fabric didn't work out because they were it was a second fabric and it had like a massive um, mark in the middle of it but I haven't got round to using it again to make the second pair so it, it did fit quite well actually so I need to get around to doing that and then the last sew over it pattern is this one and it is the vintage shirt dress and this I have made once and I've got another one cut out a short sleeved version and I did really like the first version but 
I think that because I made it with long sleeves, I just haven't really worn it very much. So definitely I think I will need to cut the sleeves to kind of this length or a short sleeve version and I'll wear it a lot more as well. Also the one I made, I made out of cotton and actually I think um, whenever I wear it, it sticks to my tights, which I think is just one of the things that happens with cotton. So I think I need to look into some other fabrics and as I'm starting to learn a bit more with viscose, I think that I'll get more into that and, um, and then hopefully it'll turn out a bit better the next time. So that is all the sew over it PDF patterns. So actually out of those, I've only made um, one garment that I've actually worn. Uh, so And the other, I made just a fake one. So I basically need to make the patterns. And I think I just need to kind of get on with that, maybe to try one a week or one a month, and then I can post a review video about it. The next one that I've actually used um, a lot more are from Helen's Closet. So the first is this one, which is the Blackwood Cardigan. And I think I've made about six or seven of these. So that one, really love that one. I think out of all of my PDF patterns, it's the one I've made the most. So yeah, that one was really good value. And then the next one is this one. So this is the York Pinafore. And I've actually made this twice, um, both for my sister, but I am gonna make it for myself as well. I've got some kind of cranberry cores to make it with. Um, so that's on my list of things to make. And definitely as it gets towards autumn, I think these look really nice with um, like a long sleeve top and things. So that's what I'm kind of looking to make. And the cranberry cord was from Like So Amazing and I think she's still got some in stock now as well. And the last tennis closet one is this, which is the Winslow Colotte. Now I did make a pair of these and unfortunately, when I tried them on they just really didn't look right on me and I think it would be fine but they made me feel very big around my hips and I just didn't feel very comfortable so I have attempted to make these um, but I'm gonna see if it was the fabric and I'm gonna basically just hold off on this pattern again and um, there's nothing wrong with the pattern it's just it, it didn't suit me very much um, so I have made that, but I don't actually have the garment because I then cut it up to make into something else. The next two are two free ones that I got. So the first one is this, and this is the Plantain Tea from Deer and Doe, and this is just a plain jersey t-shirt. Now I have only made one, but I only downloaded the pattern maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, but it's an amazing t-shirt pattern. Like, I would really recommend it. So I hired the neckline on mine, but I really love that t-shirt and I've already worn it a couple of times and I felt really comfortable in it. So really love that pattern and um, it's a free one as well. So give it a try if you haven't already. And I will definitely be making a lot more of these. I was looking for a perfect t-shirt pattern and I think this is it. So actually I'm gonna be making a few more. So that's a really good one. And the next is this one. So this is the Largo Tank from Itch to Stitch. Now this, for me, it turned out quite well, but I think I would have needed a full bust adjustment. So that top actually went to my sister because I found that I was having a lot of um, kind of bagging under my chest. So I found that when that happens, I either need to put a dart in or just do a full bust adjustment, which, you know, my self-drafted pattern has a dart in um, already. So I, I, I'm not too sure about whether I'll make this again, but I have made an adjustment to the back and I would just need to adjust kind of the front for this. Um, but that's that one. But if you don't need a full bust adjustment, really lovely tank top pattern. And it's another free one that you can get on their website as well. And then I've got two that I've just bought um, one of the patterns. So I've got the Nina Lee Q dress. Now I made this in just the strapped version without the cold shoulder sleeves. And I really loved it, but I didn't kind of wear it during the summertime. And I don't really feel comfortable wearing that kind of thing just over a top or anything. Um, I find that quite uncomfortable. But this might be a pattern that I try again really soon. Um, I need to plan something to make for the Socialite Soiree, which is happening um, in November. So this might be something that I make because it did fit really well. I did try and make this version with the um, full kind of shoulders. So I thought that would be better to wear kind of in the winter. But it really didn't fit me on the chest. Um, and I find my chest is quite, I've got quite a hollow chest. And then I think, you know, there's something with my shoulders as well, which I'm not quite sure. So I think what I'm going to do is cut this uh, pattern and put it onto some tissue and then try the tissue fitting method from here to try and just alter it so it works. Um, and then that's something that I'll be able to wear in winter. So I'll definitely be making this again. Really love the pattern. Um, I think it's really cute. 
but it's just I haven't got round to making it again. And the last one is this one. So this is the Kokowawa Crafts Honeycomb Dress and Top. And I made two versions of this when I first made it. One was a make for Minerva Crafts and one was just a test version. And I hacked the neckline so it was a V neck because I did originally make the high collar and I find that it was very tight around my neck. But since I've actually made that, I've realised there's an adjustment you can do to kind of loosen that a little bit. So I should be making this again. I really want to make it in Jersey to see how that kind of works out. And I really love the ties to like change the shape of the garment. So I've been adding that on to some dresses that I've made more recently to just pull this in. And I will definitely be adding that on to the Alex shirt dress when I make it. Rather than having a separate belt or tie, I'm going to sew them into the seam so I can wrap them round. So I learned a lot of things from that pattern, especially how to do the burrito method and actually do the short collar and things like that. So that was really good to kind of build up my skills. And I will definitely be making it again. I just need to make a few adjustments to the pattern just so it um, suits me a little bit better. So my last two patterns, now I didn't buy these. I was um, given these because I was uh, pattern testing for them. And the first one is this one, which is now out. And that's the Canary Cami by Wearable Patterns. And I will be doing a, re a full review video for this one as well. Um, but I really loved making it. I made it out of a cotton, which was I feel was a bit too heavyweight for it. But actually, if you were making it out of a light viscose, then it's really lovely. And it's actually a bit more fitted around the chest. So if you just want like a simple top that actually fits really nicely, then this is a really good one to go for. And um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Um, and I will definitely make it again. And the last one is this one. So this is the Evelyn blouse and it's by experimental space and i've just tested this pattern and it is not out quite yet but um it was really lovely to test it so that is all of my pdf patterns if you've got any questions for my q a video or you can tell me how better to store my pdf patterns please comment below thanks so much for watching if you liked this video please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me goodbye Thank you.